hello. All right, we are starting. Um, just going to take a moment as usual to let people show up, make sure the stream is working right, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, today is the final day of this animal stream week. Um, we started with, what was it, the Ardwolf, and we had Hedgehogs, and then we did Kom uh, Komodo Dragons, and then yesterday we did Water Deer, and today we do Crows. Yes. Hello, Lemon. I think, Lemon, you've been here for all five, I guess, right? How is, um, I'd be curious to hear how, um, how they've been for you. So I think, I think it was you, right, that was also drawing along and like trying to apply some of the stuff. That's, that's good to hear. Yeah, I'm glad that uh, you're enjoying it. Then again, I feel like if you weren't enjoying it, you just you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be here each time. <laughs> I just realized my tablet isn't even set up. Okay. Oh, shot. Okay. All right, uh, I was really just here for the water deer. <laughs> yeah, no one's gonna show up today. Now that we've done the water deer, it's all over. <laughs> you and uh, you and Tatiana. Um, I guess I'll here. I'll start with the warm up now, um, just as we kind of wait for people to show up. Um, so just as I've been doing, setting a timer for five minutes, and then um, yeah, let's get kind of warm up. Should have saved the water deer for Friday. Um, I don't I think crows are like a pretty good thing to cover. Because we haven't like done anything. You know, we haven't done any birds. Like we've done yeah, just mostly like mammals and one reptile. Um, I think crows are a nice way to end it. I was actually like considering ending it with uh, my dog. I was actually taking a bunch of pictures of her. Um, so that we could like kind of work from those. But it's because it's so similar to, because uh, dogs are so similar to like the art wolf that we started with. Um, I think it makes a lot more sense to do something like yeah, like a bird or we could do like a fish or um, or an insect. Um, yeah, already uh, since yesterday, I've just been thinking of like other ways I could kind of keep doing this sort of stuff because um, like we've only really scratched the surface. There's so much stuff to kind of go over, especially like with yesterday where we got into the um, the like the anatomy of um, the water deer. I thought that was like really useful stuff, and I got a little bit of that for the birds as well that we're gonna do today. Um, but yeah, I think there's still a lot we could do. So. Something I'd like to revisit in the future. Or even doing more of the like kind of character work. So when we have when we've had time, we've done a bit of like character design based on the animals at the end, and that's been pretty sweet. Um, you're looking for the forest book. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, it's it really is a great book. Um, I mean, yeah, you could, I feel like you could like just order it online or whatever um maybe even you just get like an ebook um actually the guy who writes it uh, mike matessi he has um he has like i think he has like four or five books all around that kind of like force principle um and it's just a really cool um like method of, of kind of drawing and, and bringing life into your drawings um, he is a animator, a classical animator, um, 
and I feel like they have some of the coolest, at least for me, they have some of like the coolest styles. Um, and they're really good at like kind of bringing life into still images. And so this whole force thing is kind of about like the different rhythms um, that kind of go through animals or humans or whatever. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you can track that down, I would recommend a lot of what a lot of what I'm um, explaining in these videos, or like in these streams, um, has come from that particular book. Like, there's a lot of really good information in there, and there's a solid couple of weeks where I was spending like hours a day <laughs> with that book. Um, For anybody who's just showing up, I'm just doing a quick warm up right now. I've um, got about like a minute left in it. And then we're going to jump into um, some information on bird anatomy, which I think will be pretty cool for you guys. Um, and then we'll get into crows. Something that's been a kind of cool byproduct of doing these streams all week is I'm starting to get a little more comfortable with um, using my, my, my iPad for um, a tablet. Just something I've wanted to, yeah, something I've been wanting to do. I'm very slow to uh, switch over to like new tools once I'm comfortable with one. All right, that's been five minutes. All right, so that is our warm up. And speaking of that uh, that book, the the Force Animal Drawing Book, um, I got some more um, drawings from it that I'm gonna kind of use to. Yeah, there's there it is in the top left. Um, yeah, so we're gonna use that just to kind of explain a bit about the bird legs and arms um, and how they relate to people legs and arms. And this will be really good information for us going into the crow drawings. Okay. Um, so yeah, when we did like the um, the deer yesterday, we we're kind of showing how um, the bones in the legs relate to like forearms, um, kind of like the 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 top of the arm and like the wrist and the fingers and all that stuff. Um, so we're gonna look at how that works with birds. So I'm just zoom in here. So I remember that I was always like, like looking at a bird, I was always like, okay, like they have, you know, they have knees as well, but they just bend the opposite direction to us. Sure, that's just how they work. Um, but actually, and that was, that was, let me see. That would have been this right here. So I was like, oh yeah, that's their knee. It just bends reverse. But actually, if you were to compare it with um, a human, this would actually be their knee. And in which case, it's actually bending the same way that ours do. So um, to compare it to us, you would have a thigh, then you would have the knee, then the shin, and then this would be the ankle. And then right here, this is like, this is just like the foot. And then you would have the toes coming out of the foot. Um, so that just kind of gives you a better, uh, a different idea of how the bird is kind of structured. Um, and it's really important to note, like when you see because like oftentimes when you have the birds, like, uh, just a second. So what kind of at least threw me off um, is that this part here is pretty much covered. Like you have like muscles and 
um, and feathers and all this stuff. And so usually in the birds, you're only really seeing um, this part here. And you'll see that when we get into the crows. Um, so because you're not really seeing this bone and this joint here, um, and they don't move too, too much. Um, yeah, because you're not seeing them, it's kind of hard to remember that they're there. But when you think about this as an ankle and not as a knee, it's kind of helpful. Um, to get more specific on the actual foot here, we can go to this little diagram here and just kind of see a comparison. So again, yeah, so again, this is the ankle, then you have the foot, and then at the top of the foot, I guess like where the knuckles would be, you can kind of see in this comparison here, that's where these toes kind of extend out to be the, uh, the claws. And then there's another one that kind of comes back here. And I think it's some birds, like this one here, that I believe, yeah, with this, uh, this crow, seems like you get another one up here. Very similar to like how like some dogs will have like a uh, dew claws on like their, on their legs. Um, so that is the legs. Now if we go to the arms, here's a, this is just a cool um, kind of comparison of, yeah, just like how the bird is positioned versus the, the person. Um, and just like I was talking about that kind of, that force, that rhythm that he talks about in his books. I mean, you can kind of see that that's what these kind of lines here are. It's just showing you how the wing kind of um, flows into from one part into the next. But again, getting it to the arms. Um, yeah, so we have the human arm here. So here is the shoulder. Here is the elbow. And then this is the forearm. And then what happens is right here we have the wrist. Like our wrist. Hey Mantis, nice to see you again. So right here we have the wrist. And then what happens in this area here is all of the um, all of the finger bones. Um, well, this is kind of like the palm here. And then all the finger bones, they kind of like fuse into one. Um, this is the same kind of thing that happens with like hooked animals. Um, is like that kind of big toe or or like some animals have like you know two hooves like like camels or something um but what happens is just like all of the bones fuse into um yeah just one kind of big thing or in this case one sort of like slender thing and then yeah and then all the feathers just kind of link up off this and that is like the main things um do you guys have any questions on this before i move on to the crows Again, like this is just like a really small piece of the kind of, of the force um, animal drawing book by Mike Montessi up here. Um, and yeah, it just gives you really great comparisons between people and animals. Because um, like a really good, a really nice way to um, learn how to draw something new is to try and fit it into something you already know. So if you already have an idea of like humans and because you are a human, you kind of know like, oh, I know where my thigh is, I know where my knee is. Um, you at least have some like basic understanding of how people work. Um, so if you kind of fit this new knowledge about animals into that, um, it makes it a lot stickier. It sticks in your brain better. Um, so that's why I'm doing it like this. But it seems... Um, cool guys, I, yeah, I'm glad you think so. But I'm glad it's helpful for you guys. Um, that's just why I explain it like this too, is because it's made such a big difference for me. Um, especially like since I've gone to, I've gone to like some exhibits where they, you know, they take, um, they take like animal animal skeletons and like set them up and they put like all the muscles on and you can like see like um, real like just the the kind of construction like the anatomy of animals like in person and it's really cool to be like holy crap like we have the same bones. And they all bend the same way. And then when you get into muscles, it's like, oh yeah, like the muscles are all the same too. Um, so it's just really, uh, really cool to see actually how similar we are 
it's just the way everything's arranged is a bit different in the way and how some things are sized differently and our posture and all that stuff. But we kind of have a lot of like the core building blocks um, that are the same. So that is that. <clears throat> so this, uh, this information will be pretty good for us. <laughs> Organic Lego, yes. <laughs> Um, and actually, to that point too, it's um, it's really helpful when you want to like create your own uh, creatures. Um, like if you're, yeah, maybe you're like working on a sci-fi project or like a fantasy project or something, and um, you have to, you know, make an imaginary creature, um, knowing all of these common characteristics of real animals and incorporating that into your imaginary one. Will make it more believable um, and that's what a lot of yeah like creature artists do um, is they kind of borrow certain aspects from real life and that's what makes it yeah that's what makes it believable in the end so if you want to make up if you want to <laughs> invent really cool believable stuff um, it makes a lot of sense to learn the real stuff um, the backwards knees look so painful. Yes. Now we know it's not too painful. It's kind of like those are just their um, their ankles, and our ankles bend that way. So yeah, now we are looking at crows. Um, and here you can see like a skeleton. That is, this isn't a crow again. This is a, a keel, different bird. Um, but it kind of gives you a sense of um, what we're just talking about. So, yeah, if I just quickly draw over this, there we have the thigh bone, the uh, shin bone, the foot, and then the toes. Um, and then, and then they have this kind of like breastbone here, because like, so, because um, oh, and Karen B. Yes, hi. <laughs> nice to see you there. Uh, I'm glad you came. Um, but something you notice in, a, like, in, in, in birds is they have this like, really, really big breastbone right here. And that is so that they have a lot of area to anchor all of their big breast muscles. Um, because like, you know, a big function of birds is flying around and they need really strong breast muscles so that they can flap their wings. Um, so they need this big bone there to uh, anchor all of those muscles. Oh wow, okay. Uh, where, where in Japan are you? And also like um, there are, these are all like recorded and I'm putting them on YouTube as well. So if you do miss one, um, you can always jump on there and um, see what you missed. But of course it's, you know, it's more fun to have you here. Ah cool, Tokyo. Yeah, I was over in uh, in Japan last September, um, and I was yeah I was in uh, uh, Tokyo for a week or so. Okay. Okay, let me just zoom out here. Alright, so just as um, we've been doing all week, I'm just going to start out by, yeah, just kind of drawing, um, trying to draw to understand uh, the crow, so that I can then draw it without reference. Um, so I'm going to use a similar model to what we did, or similar similar method to what we did yesterday, and just kind of like try and break it down to some simple um simple pieces so I could just be like oh the head's a sphere um, and then it's got this like kind of cone mouth and then what would I, what would I do for the body hmm I mean, it's kind of just like another sort of sphere sort of shape. Just so you guys know, I'm kind of looking at this one right now. I'm trying to kind of capture that pose, but like maybe in more simple objects. 
Um, and then now, again, because I know the anatomy, um, I know that there's some, like, bones up here that kind of attach into these bits. Those are the bendy, bendy bits. Oops, my thing turned off. Yep, so again, at this point, we are just trying to, um, not trying to make it a super beautiful drawing, we're just trying to, um, yeah, learn about the crow. And then yeah, the, the kind of tail is like, I don't know, almost like, I can maybe you can consider it like, this kind of, almost like a cape or like a big piece of paper <laughs> that's kind of like hanging off the back there. And I really like, they have like all these different layers and that's something that I know that I need to work on is figuring out like how the different feathers layer with one another. Do you prefer to do your sketching in Photoshop or Illustrator? I prefer Photoshop. Um, I think that's probably just because I've done it more often there. Um, but also just, it just feels a lot more like, for me it's, it's trying to do things that are um, um, more like when I'm drawing on paper. Like, my preference is to sketch on paper. Um, and so when I'm working digitally, the best I can do to kind of recreate that is what I would do. And, and, and sketching an illustrator is a bit... It's like if you sketch in Flash or something. It's, it's, it's kind of a little too smooth. Um, and I don't really want the program correcting my strokes. Um, it's kind of like, I don't know, in, in a certain way, I see it as like a, a bit of a crutch. Uh, Mantis, will I be doing these in the future? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think this week's been pretty successful. I think you guys have really enjoyed it, and we've been able to kind of go over a lot of things. Um, so even though this, this week of these is going to be finishing today, um, yeah, I'd definitely like to do more. Um, maybe incorporate it more into the uh, the normal streams that I've been doing. Um, yeah, so no promises on when, um, but especially if it's something that you guys really like, I'll be uh, doing it again for sure. So I can look at my drawing here and see that um, mine's too small. I'm just gonna do one of these things in Photoshop. Haha, -ha. <laughs> he's longer now. <laughs> and Mantis, thanks for continuing to come to all these streams. Um, it's really great having you here. And if there's anything that like you miss and you really want to see, again, we do have the recordings both on here. They'll be here for two weeks and they'll be on YouTube indefinitely. So you can go and check those out. I'm gonna do just one of these other poses. Um, Mantis, if you're not already on my newsletter, um, that would be the best way to find out. Um, that's where I announced when I started doing this thing. I try to like announce it in all of the kind of social places, but I, the, the newsletter is, the intention of that is to um, yeah, kind of be like the one-stop shop for like what's going on. Um, so you can find that through my website, which would be just hkaube.com. Yeah, Anna, with, um, if you just have a base, basic membership, then like I do, then Twitch only um, catalogs them for, uh, for two weeks. But if I wanted to like, I don't know, be like, I don't know, maybe like Amazon Prime or whatever, um, or some other sort of thing, then that would be different. Um, so that's why I'm trying to make sure that the ones that I think are really good, um, or like that are really beneficial, like 
like we've been doing here this week. Make sure that I, I export those to my uh, my YouTube uh, page so that, yeah, we can just kind of check them out whenever. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about earlier, like, um, like you can't, you can only see, because you can only see this part of the leg, that joint, that's where it's really easy to mistake in that for um, a knee when it's really the equivalent of an ankle. There's actually another bone, I need a different color. Yeah, that's another bone up here. And that was more like the knee. So the leg's kind of more like that. Oops. Yeah, you're welcome, Mantis. Yeah. And and also, too, like, um, feel free to, like, message me if there's any, like, uh, questions you have or if there's, like, a specific thing you'd actually like to see on the stream. Because um, that's, like, super useful information for me. Like, I'm doing this for you guys, so um, I want to know what you want. <laughs> right now, it's just kind of like me taking my best guess at what's going to be uh, helpful. Helpful slash fun. So if I really wanted to like learn how all these wings and layers of feathers are layered and stuff, um, which is definitely something I need to address uh, because I don't really have too good an understanding of it, um, I think it'd probably be good for me to like study a bird that isn't completely black like this. <laughs> so it doesn't make it hard to see the different layers. So I'm not going to focus too much on that today. I'm gonna do is really just kind of try and focus on like what are the characteristics um, that make a crow a crow. Um, so one thing is that it's black, uh, another thing is can it be its size, but also um, is like its bill or its beak rather. Um, so you can see like it's kind of it's slightly slanted down, um, but more or less it's kind of like this shaped. Yeah. So that registers as like a crow beak. Um, I've also noticed that it has a really flat top to the head. Um, so that would be good to note. Uh, well, what's going on in here? Um, and I know it's really cool to hear that uh, these have been good for you. That's what I've been hearing a lot from you guys, that uh, these have been good. So yeah, I'm happy to do them and I think I'd like to keep doing them more in the future. Um, to answer how many times a week I practice, um, every day. Um, so I have a set time um, every morning where I do, I just sit down, I'll have like something that I'm currently working on. Um, so this week it is animals and I will dedicate at least 30 minutes to um, working on that area. Um, so recently I've been doing a lot of like practice in um, character design and also revisiting some fundamental skills like drawing shapes in like three dimensions and and um, like controlling my like line quality and stuff. But what I, yeah, what I try to do is always have like at least one thing that I'm kind of working on each week and that will be like my weekly focus. And then I have a dedicated time each day to, uh, to work on that. 
Hello, uh, is it Terry? Terry? <laughs> Welcome. So I can even look at this drawing here, and this is where it's, this would be where it's good for me to, um, you know, check back with my reference, like, here, with the, um, the skeleton, because, like, I, I kind of made it like a ball, but the bird really isn't, like, a ball. Um, it kind of just has, like, this main breastbone and, like, muscles and stuff here, and then it kind of, it tapers a bit more. do another one of these so it's a bit more accurate so not so much a ball um, it's more of like a I don't know what do you, what do you, let's see like this is the head maybe it's more of like a kind of like triangle thing and then another sort of like I guess kind of like that, maybe? And then here's a, a cone. Yeah, so I, I, again, like, it's it's always a, a, a good idea, especially when you're having, like, trouble wrapping your brain around a certain object, a certain part of an object. Just try to relate it back to, like, simple geometry. Like, if I were to build this out of cones and spheres and boxes, like, what would that look like? Um, Again, that, that helps you tie in um, new information with existing information. Because everybody, you know, knows spheres and boxes and stuff. Uh, Thierry, great, got it, thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, everybody kind of, you know, knows these very simple shapes. So if you can kind of take something that's a little more complex, like an animal, and distill it into these simple shapes, um, your brain is just a lot better way of dealing with it and, and memorizing it. Um, it's a lot easier to remember a bird as a series of spheres and, and cones. Um, and then once you kind of have that down, like you can, it's a lot easier for you to pose that animal in different ways. And it works the same with people. You can pose people in different ways. And then, and then you can worry about the details later. Like once you got like the kind of core structure down, then you can worry about like, okay, what would this part actually look like? How would I lay feathers on top of this? How would I, you know, carve this out? Um, what am I doing for my next subject study? Um, so next week, um, I actually decided this just the other day, I'm going to be working on lighting um, and specifically like mood lighting. So how, um, yeah, how do, um, how do you get across like certain feelings, emotions um, with just lighting alone, especially like with like the human face, like you can like light the human face from different angles and Sometimes it'll look pretty, it'll be nice and soft looking. Other times it'll look like really scary. Like especially, you know, like you have like the people holding the flashlight like under their under their chin or whatever shooting up. It looks quite like eerie. And, um, so I'm gonna be exploring that kind of in my personal practice time. I'm not gonna be doing streams of that. That's just gonna be kind of me um, figuring that stuff out. So that's what I realized is like when I'm, when I do lighting in my work, um, it's all kind of, it's, usually, it's, it's, quite, it's quite similar. I kind of have like this automatic way of doing it and I kind of, I want to override that and add some more variety. All right, my, now might be a good time for me to take away the reference and try and draw without it. So that's been kind of a theme over all of these streams has been, um, so some time with the reference photos, get to know the animal a bit, and then take it all away and see what we can do without it. And then from there we'll find our mistakes, correct it, that sort of thing. He knew with color and light class on schools. Good. Yeah, no, I've heard the same thing. And I've actually been looking at schoolism classes for a while um, and have yet to do any of them. Um, so that that's actually not a bad idea, Lemon. Um, I might consider that. Because right now I'm actually trying to figure out like what will be the the best way for me to improve that skill. Um, yeah, not a bad idea. So crows. So 
Yeah, so like, it's in the kind of, the shape was again, kind of like, Um, just so in both here in digital and like on pencil and paper um, it's always good to try and sketch quite lightly um, not worry too much about erasing especially when you're just doing you know little studies like this because um, again it's not supposed to be perfect and it's a good habit of yeah just kind of working really lightly and then once you're a little more confident in a lines placement then you can kind of draw darker and solidify that yeah so you notice that I don't do much erasing until like I'm doing like some of the fixes later on sorry I can tell that I'm kind of making them a bit too fat So they got like these three toes in the front, one in the back. That's something I remember from when we were looking at the uh, anatomy earlier. Now that foot's a little messed up. Should be facing. Should be facing this way. So yeah, here's a, here's here's when I I will erase. So I just got too messy, I couldn't see anything anymore. So I think one of the big things I'm probably going to be having to work on with this uh, animal is proportion. Because um, so I already feel like things are off comparatively. Like the head seems like it might be a bit too big. The body seems a bit too fat. The legs, I think the legs might need to be a bit longer. And like how big is the beak in relation to the rest of the head. Like these sorts of things I didn't pay too much attention to when we were first learning it. So, I think they're going to be a bit off. Okay. And so here, trying to figure out like where am I going to put like the wings. It helps to remember like the skeleton. Um, so there's kind of like this like, rib cage in here. And then there's like this breastbone. And then here would be like, is it the shoulders, like arc of the shoulders? And then when they have like, I think when they're just, when they're just sitting like, their arms are kind of like up like this. But this is where I need to find out like how do the, how do the feathers like connect to the arms? That's the one thing that I don't really know too well. And I can probably check back with that in the reference after we're done this. But yeah, I'm gonna say it's like something like that. And then, and then the tail kind of comes in and like kind of groups up with these feathers. Because it's supposed to be dark, I'm just going to kind of put in just some values to help also like reinforce some of these forms. And then maybe put in some lines for the feathers.
so yeah something like that let's say this beak is a little weird okay um, I think so this is so something I maybe I should have done here actually is I should just draw in bigger um, that's a problem that I have is I tend to draw too small by default and so a lot of time I have to kind of remember to force myself to draw bigger and because when you get into like doing details and stuff like these little claws or like the beak it's easy to just get lost in all my lines um, so let's bring back our reference and see how we can improve this guy so I am going to yeah, just move this here then I'm going to duplicate it so we can compare later and let's look at yeah, what, what changes can be made. So, um, if I look at the reference, the eye is a lot closer to the beak. And then the head kind of like curves after that. So that's something I'm going to want to kind of do to my guy here. Let's kind of have this. sort of like curve into the back. Yeah, so kind of like curves and then goes into the back. And you guys see that here, curves and then into the back. Yeah. So the head's more like that. And then the eye is like, more like there than where I had it. So I kind of put it like right in the center of the head and that's not right. Um, apparently it was hard to say. <laughs> yeah, Tadia. <yeah. laughs> I think even when you first came in, I was kind of like, like I think the first time you came to one of my streams, I was like, who, who is this? Let's see the beak here. And so yeah, with the beak, I'm actually gonna do too is like find out how long it needs to be. Um, so if I kind of compare my drawing. That's the length of the beak. And it seems to be like, I don't know, maybe like, is that two or? Yeah, it's kind of like a bit more than half of the head. So I think it's actually not in too bad of a spot. I just kind of make some measurements here. Yeah, so that's kind of a good length. I think the shape's just a bit off. Oh, and right, and as I'm doing this, I can see like the neck needs to be a bit bigger. There we go. He looks a little bit like he's smiling. <laughs> okay. Um, and then another kind of interesting thing here is like how far like this, I guess this is kind of like the top, like maybe you could say like, I don't know, is that kind of like the neck area or I forget what they call it in the birds. I guess it's just like the throat area, but um, yeah, it kind of like really comes out, and then it comes back in. Um, and it happens actually a lot higher than I have it too. And that should be happening here. So... I'm gonna have that go to here. And then come down like that. There we go. Um, he's a bit too wide, there we go. And then the wings seems like, yeah, the wings kind of like taper off this way. By the way, guys, ask uh, if there's any, any questions like about what I'm doing or why I'm doing stuff like 
always just, you know, throw them at me. I'm really trying to kind of think out loud here as I correct my drawing. I know it's easy to like overlook stuff. Um, so I can see that his, the bottom of his tail is like actually quite flat. Um, I mean, from this thing, you can see that it kind of curves. But my, um, my pose is a lot more similar to this one here. And it, sh it, it should kind of, yeah, like taper out a bit. See here, a crow never sleeps. <laughs> the music is very Mega Man. <laughs> yeah, some of these songs sound like Mega Man or like Kirby or um, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Can everything also be positioned for a poop? <laughs> yeah, my water deer yesterday looked like it was shitting. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the legs seem to be thicker up here, and then they kind of taper down, then they thicken again right near the foot. So I'm looking at like this kind of, this like curve in the wing here. Um, it kind of lines up with the um, the curve there, like right where the throat kind of turns into the, um, turns into like the chest area. And actually, I think that might be like the equivalent of like a shoulder or something. Like there. So anyway, I'm kind of having these two things line up. Because that's what it seems to me they do. Do you work only on digital drawing? Uh, no, no. Um, like I've, I've, I've kind of said, um, my default or my preference is um, to just do sketchbook. So um, drawing normally. Um, I am only doing a digital right now. I mean, a because it's something that I do want to work on. I wish I was better at digital, more comfortable at digital. Um, but. Um, I'm doing it because it's easier to stream this than <laughs> try and tilt the laptop to show my sketchbook. So I can, yeah, if I want, I can kind of use some lines here to try and um, wrap around form in the way that the feathers do to kind of hint at those feathers. So I'm kind of doing that like on the throat here. And yeah, on the rest of the neck. Um, it also just gives you a better sense of like the actual three dimensions of this. I'm also trying to do it mostly in the areas that I think would be the uh, the darkest because it does add some dark values.
Thanks for talking me off, Anna. <laughs> making me sound great. Actually, no, crows don't tweet. I'm crazy. There we go. Yeah. Um, so I think this is at a nice place to um, compare with the first drawing. Here it is. Yeah, so here we go. This is where we really get to see the difference that um, fixing our mistakes makes. Um, so this drawing on the left here, um, that was after I drew a couple of crows and had a good bearing on what it was. Um, and then brought back the reference and then fixed it up into the right drawing. Um, I think the right drawing was way better. Uh, so much more like a bird, and in particular a crow. Um, and I think I mentioned, I think I, I keep saying this like every stream, but I really want to, you know, uh, drill it in. Is like this is the best thing to do, like to actually not just notice the mistakes that you've made, but to fix them as soon as you've noticed them. Um, I can tell you right now that in the future when I draw birds, and in particular when I draw crows, um, I am going to remember things because I actually took the time to do them. Um, in particular, like, um, kind of like the back curve of this, oops. <laughs> uh, in particular, like the, how like the back of the head kind of curves here, how the eye is like closer to the beak than I initially thought. Um, this part here, um, you can see like, I kind of had this like, almost like bowling ball shape to the bird. Um, but I will definitely remember this angle here and how like the wings kind of kind of go and join up with the the tail feathers so all these things um are now going to stick with me because i actually took the time to um to fix them yeah um so we have um yeah we have about like I'll just say like 10 minutes or so. Um, I'm not going to start another drawing, but what I will do, um, I'm just going to leave these up. What I'll do is like, if you have anybody has any questions about um, what we did today, or maybe what we did all week, like I said, this is something we've been doing from Monday every morning. Um, we've gone through, actually, maybe I can like, I can't pull up everything. I don't have all the files on this computer, so. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about anything that we've done, um, I know some of you guys have already asked, like if I'll be doing more of more of these like animal drawing things, um, and yeah, I'd like to. Um, I think it's been really helpful and it's been fun, and I'm getting better as I do it. Um, so yeah, I think I'll be doing more of them. I'm not quite sure when or in what manner, but other than that, I do have the, the, the normal stream that continues to happen on Tuesdays um, from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, right now we're working on like a vector robot. Um, and yeah, you guys want to crow in pajamas, so <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Yeah, so, and then here's, yeah, I guess here's like the next step, like once we have a good set of saying on crows, it's like, oh, you could, you know, you could draw characters based on it. So let's see. Whatever, I guess we're drawing in red.
but they include a sleeping cap. They, of course, can include a sleeping cat, lemon. Ah, no, this needs to be like this. Okay, so it's kind of like our crow buddy, and he needs <laughs> pajamas. Hmm. <laughs> How do I even give him pajamas? Let's. Guys, this might not work out, but that's okay. Most drawings don't. <laughs> It'll be like a hole for his wings, I guess. Sleeping gal, that could have been, that could have worked. Well, I guess he's getting more like, well, <laughs> two ladies are getting more like a bodysuit kind of thing, uh, kind of onesie sort of thing. <laughs> I'm glad this is how we're ending off the uh, <laughs> the stream week. We're drawing a crow in pajamas.
<laughs> Good night, Adam. <laughs> Start the week. <laughs> things tail. This needs to be. That's where I'm getting picky. It's important that he's smiling too. Yeah, so that is um, a Corona Pajamas. Um, a very good practical use for um, all the drawing we've done today. <laughs> I just kind of like position all the stuff we can see. Yeah. Um, yeah, so before I, before I add things off, um, yeah, I just want to, again, give an opportunity for anybody to like ask any questions about um, what we went over, um, the kind of process that we took. Um, this guy should be a little tilted more. Looks like he belongs on a Christmas card. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I think it's the, like, the Santa Claus-like hat. Um, but um, what I kind of, like, the whole reason that I did this um, was just to kind of give people an idea of like effective ways of learning how to draw something. Um, it can be really easy to just do like the first step that we've done, which is just pull up images and copy them. Um, and that does, you know, work and give you a sense of it, but it doesn't make nearly the difference that it does to actually like try and, um, yeah, to try and construct an animal out of like basic three dimensional shapes. That kind of gives you more of information about it to try and pose it in new ways. So take what you're seeing in the reference photo and then um, posing it um, in a different way um, that takes some different forms of understanding and then also to um, to try and draw without the reference because um, it's kind of like a test for yourself and then once you do that you can see um, yeah you can see what's missing like you can see with the two crows here um, that made a really big difference in this drawing um, first one doesn't really look like a crow, the second one looks a lot more like a crow. Um, and it really is just from taking the time to fix the fix those mistakes. And now going forward, as we can see with um, our little pajama guy, is like I was able to remember a lot more um, pieces of, a lot more distinguishing characteristics of the crow, um, just because I had gone through the exercise of correcting the mistakes. Um, and the reason, wait, that's why he's smiling. He saw presents under the tree. <laughs> I love it, guys. Oh, <laughs> cute little crow. Um, so yeah, that's why I did this. Um, I was really happy to have like so many of you guys come each and every day. Um, it was real cool just kind of hanging out with you guys in the mornings, and I hope you, you know, continue to join me in the future streams. Like I said, I have the ones that go on Tuesdays from one to three. Um, and I'll continue to kind of explore different ways, different things like this that we could do, as well as do more of the animal stuff, because I love drawing animals, and there's just a wealth of information that we could go over. Um, 
what did I think of the daily streaming? Um, yeah, I mean, I like overall, I'm really happy that I did it just because um, A, I got to like hang out with you guys, which is really cool. It's something I didn't really um, think too much about when I started streaming. It was just like how fun it would actually be to uh, be hanging out with the same people every morning. Um, one of the other things I really liked about it is that it did, you know, really force me to spend the time and practice each morning. So this week, you know, I put in five hours into getting better at drawing animals because of these streams. Um, that, and it does seem like an effective way to teach. And that's kind of what I'm on the hunt for is like, what are new and, uh, new and different ways that I can, I can do like the teaching stuff that I've been, so far I've just been doing on Skillshare. Um, other than that, um, you know, like forcing myself to do it each day, like takes a little bit, you know, of effort. Um, <laughs> um, I could say probably most of these mornings at the beginning, I was like, ah, I don't want to do this. I'd rather just kind of chill out. And, um, so part of me is happy that next week, I think my, my morning routine will kind of go back to normal. Um, but I definitely want to do stuff like this more in the future. Um, because it's, it's worth disrupting my morning routine. Um, and yeah, thanks. Yeah, guys, thanks a lot for the, the comments. I'm glad that you learned a lot, um, that you saw was useful. That really gives me encouragement to do more of these things. Um, and Anna, yes, I totally seem, I totally am a lot more comfortable. Um, <laughs> that was another big thing that I wanted to do with this stream week was like, if I do an hour every day, then I'm going to get more comfortable. Um, and yeah, that's definitely happened. Um, so I'm happy about that. That means I have more freedom to do these kinds of things and not worry about being super nervous about it. Um, and Tatiana, I would like to do some evenings. Um, I'm going to continue to explore different times of the day to try. Um, I prefer earlier in the day. That's why I've kind of stuck to this time. That's why I've stuck to just like one, which has kind of just been after lunch for me. Um, I usually have other things going on in the evenings. Um, but I can definitely make it work and, and try it out. And, and yeah, I, I do recognize that most people are free, not during the workday. <laughs> um, so yeah. And yeah, so um, I know Mantis was in here asking earlier, but for any of you guys, um, if you want to kind of keep updated on like what's going on with streams and all the other stuff I'm doing, Newsletter is the best way to do that, um, and that's hkaube.com, you can find it there. Um, or you can just follow me here on Twitch, I think you guys already do, um, like at least the guys that are here, um, and that'll tell you when I'm live. And if you're not on Vector Friends, um, I highly recommend it because it is a great, you know, Tatiana is like one of the moderators, um, and it is just a great place to kind of go and, you know, get feedback on your work, talk about art things. Um, I know especially for me, like it's really easy for me to kind of get trapped in my own world, um, just working on my own stuff. And it's nice to have a chance to talk to like-minded people and just get different perspectives. So um, yeah, that would be the final thing. Um, this will be up on YouTube shortly. So all of the streams will be accessible there. Um, there's gift wars and cool discussions about fonts and price psychology. <laughs> Yeah, you guys put so many gifts on there. Yeah. Whenever I come in, I'm like trying to find out what I missed. It's just a lot of great gifts. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is it for the stream week. Thank you guys for coming. Um, and yeah, I'm sure I'll talk to all you guys soon. So with that, I'm going to try and find the button to end the stream. And I can't seem to open it. <laughs> all right, there we go. Uh, yeah, so see you guys.